Hey everybody, I am back. It has been a long time, but rest assured, I'm going to make more videos more consistently. So stick with me because this is a really great video. You're going to like this and I'm pretty sure that most people have not heard about this martial arts. So stay tuned because it's going to be amazing. Here we go. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous martial arts. The martial art I'm talking about is called Sikendo, and it's pronounced Sikendo, but it's spelt S-U-I Kendo, and Si means water, Ken means fist, and Do means way, so it's the way of the water fist, or any variation of those that you want to put together, I'll go with. I really have no idea, but water fist way. Anyway, it's, it's a very unique martial art because if you look at the founder, Tadashi Yamashita, this guy was born in 19... 19- 46. I'm going to give a little history lesson here. Before I get started, I'm even going to jump in and play some of his highlights as I talk about the man, because that makes it more interesting. So stay tuned, because we're about to do that. So here he's showing a neck break. That's Tadashi Yamashita. Let me make this larger screen right there for you. And if you look, he actually, he's a Shorin Ryu guy. By the way, shout out to Sifu Kent Nelson or Guru Kent Nelson. He put this video together. At least it was on his channel, and I scooped it. Nice highlights. Of Tadashi Yamashita here. But if you look, the movements here are not exactly what you would see in Shorin Ryu. And the reason I bring up Shorin Ryu is because Tadashi Yamashita was a champion in Shorin Ryu and the youngest seventh degree black belt in the history of Japan at the time. And so that's a pretty amazing accomplishment. The guy's obviously an amazing martial artist. But if you look, these movements that he's doing are not exactly what you would see in traditional karate. And I'm actually going to jump into some other stuff I notice in this style, which is pretty fascinating. He does a lot of the, I'm going to punch at your face, don't move at all. He's doing it here to everyone, um, which is an interesting tactic. But uh, that's his background. And he's very famous also for teaching Jeet Kune Do master and creator Bruce Lee how to use nunchuck. So and there he is with the nunchucks. Perfect timing. Who would have guessed? I'm back. Anyway, so... If you look at his movements, they're not what you would see in traditional Shorn Ryu. They look like a hybrid. And it, it's interesting that I brought up uh, Bruce Lee because there is an influence of what I would call Jeet Kune Do or even Silat style influences there. And I wonder, I could not confirm this, if he hung out with Guru Dan in Asanto because I see a flavor of Guru Dan's movements in his movements with a little bit more of that traditional karate background. I keep looking at my screen here because I have a lot of other videos. But there's a concept that I like in this that you'll see it almost looks to me like we're looking at a hybrid of a American uh, Kempo Karate mixed with Jeet Kune Do mixed with Karate. And if you look at these quick movements, see, there we go. That looks like a very, you know, Ed Parker-ish kind of movement there. So there, there's definitely an influence of other systems in what he's doing. But this little exchange here, I really like. Let me show you something else I found that was very interesting about this style. The fact that they actually do go out and compete in full contact styles, even though it is a, what I would call traditional martial art. Any martial art that puts an apple in someone's mouth like we just saw and then hits it with something to make it explode is badass. That's just a rule of thumb. If you're looking for a place to train and they do things with apples in their mouths that then explode, you know you've found a home. Let's jump in from right here. This was an interesting kind of video that I found of a Sui, Sui Kendo, Si Kendo fighter going against an elite level kickboxer at the time. And uh, so the results are what you would expect. The kickboxer, uh, here's Naito Takumi and Dino Newville. And so you have the welterweight kickboxing champ who wins this fight. But what I will say about that is that it's interesting to see that they actually stepped in the ring and, and competed. And I like seeing that out of systems. I'm a huge fan of that. Um, you could see that this fight ends badly for the Seekhan Do guy. But he stands in there and he holds his own for a while. And then he just gets clipped on the chin. It happens. What are you going to do? Sometimes you get clipped on the chin. And then it's just, it's just been a little bit outstruck. Keep in mind, for a guy who trains without gloves, it's always very, very, very hard. And that's the end of the fight, sadly. It's always very, very hard for someone to come into a fight 
and fight with gloves when they're not used to it. And I think that's a big issue in traditional martial arts. I wouldn't call it an issue because it's actually more realistic to train without gloves. Uh, and it develops better self-defense instincts, even if it doesn't translate as well to competitive fighting. And there's some stuff that I really like here, and I'm going to actually review this footage, which is what I really wanted the focus of the video to be about. If you look at his movements, he does kind of this thing where he strikes in very fast succession. Again, that's kind of like a Kempo, Kaju Kempo approach to things that kind of bled into Jeet Kune Do a little bit. But what I will say that I really like about him, and this is where I felt the Silat influence was coming from. Look at the relaxation in his palm. He kind of just like heavy palms as opposed to a parry. He does this thing where he does this thing where I, I like this a lot. This is something that my Silat teachers would do. They had this heavy, heavy approach to, to parrying your strike. They didn't just treat it like a parry like this. They smacked heavy and their wrist was very relaxed like a monkey paw. He actually sets it up in a way that I've, I've seen in Silat many times, which is like he hits and you see he's kind of parrying things around to go from outside to inside, I'm reversing there a little bit. But if you look here, he parries and he loops the hand to the outside, which is a Silat principle in my experience. And again, nothing is, is exclusive to any one system. You'll see this in Kung Fu. You'll see it in other systems. But there it's on the outside. Now he goes to the outside on the other arm. Seen in Filipino martial arts. See that kind of heavy parry approach look at the part of his arm that he's blocking with then he goes into the back fist look how relaxed his wrist is as he blocks and he's fast and i'm going to show some people he reminds me of who are high level jeet kune do guys look how relaxed see how his hand kind of comes over again you see in filipino martial arts see a lot i like i like his body mechanics i like his movement it's something you do not see in traditional karate and that's what's really nice about it for a shorn ryu guy at such a high level to kind of have this system that looks kind of like a hybrid of his sis of, you know, what you would say, karate mixed with Jeet Kune Do, mixed with Silat. It's kind of interesting to see. And I'm going to show you someone who really, really reminds me of this, who's a Jeet Kune Do guy, but who's explosive like crazy. Look right here. Look at that. Look at the speed. That's me trying to get to the Nintendo controller before my brother when I was a kid. That's how fast I was. Okay, so here's my thoughts on the system. It's very, very similar, in my view, to systems like Kaju Kembo, Kempo, Jeet Kune Do, and even has influences of Silat. I think it's a lot harder to find. I think it's very, very cool that the guy who created it was at such a high level for Shorn Ryu because you clearly see a lot of that speed and inside-outside movement, which comes from his foundation. So in that sense, it has that element, which makes it a little bit more unique. But, and I do like that they go out and they there's guys from the system who go out and fight other people. That's always cool to see. It does seem like a hard system to find. I personally have never seen a Sikendo school around here um, or anywhere I've lived and I've lived all over the world. But if you had one near you, would I train? Would I go check it out? I probably would go check it out for sure. I don't know if it would be a system I would consistently train in. So here's my final thoughts on the system. It's a cool system. It's in the family, in my view, not of a traditional karate, but more of a Jeet Kune Do, Kempo, Kaju Kempo approach. Uh, and I like those systems. I think they have their place and they develop very good reflexes. They do develop this continuous flow of striking. I've always thought that's a very good thing for street fighting because you just go. You know, one of the big mistakes people make when they're fighting in the street is one hit, stop. I have to think about what I'm doing again. Here, they're just constantly moving and they're getting used to that constant, constant movement where one strike bleeds into the next, bleeds into the next, bleeds into the next. It is a cool concept. For that, I do see that it has good value. Where do I think it's lacking? I didn't see much ground fighting. Uh, I didn't see much clinch work in the system. I did see a lot of what I would consider impractical clinch work. And, and that's not to, wow, my, uh, my camera does this weird thing. Did you see me go fully? Look at that. Look at that. Right there. Why am, why am I suddenly glowing yellow? And then it's gone. And then it's gone. Anyway, so it does have some 
uh, benefits. It's a very hard system to come across. I haven't found a club or school that teaches Sikh Endo ever, and I've lived in many places around the world. But the guy's clearly a very high-level martial artist. I do think it would definitely help someone for self-defense. I just thought it was a unique system. I wanted to highlight it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Okay, I'm done now.